a man walks into a bar. No, a man and a monkey walk into a bar. No, I'm sorry, a Republican and a monkey <laughs> walk into a bar, yes. And the Republican says, Well, anyway, a, a, a number of people keep coming into the bar. Hold on a second. Uh, a Republican and a monkey walk into a bar, and the Republican, no, no, a drunk. Oh, oh, oh. I, I, I know that the bartender says the nuts are complimentary. I'm so sorry, I believe I just gave away the punchline. <laughs> uh, first time I met Dick, we were uh, auditioning for the Whittier Community Players. And he came right over and asked for a date. I said, no, I, I, I was too busy. But he circled right back around later that night and said, how about that date? I just laughed and he said, don't laugh. <laughs> I'm going to marry you one day. <laughs> he actually pointed his finger, an unusual courting gesture. <laughs> Rosalind Carter's coming to tea. I can't wait. <laughs> now, she seems like a nice person, but I want to give her a tour of the White House like I want to jump off the Washington Monument. We lost. We got to get out of here. So let's go already. Give me that chaise long in Palm Springs. This lame duck stuff is like taking a Band-Aid off really slow. <laughs> and this man blew in. This six foot three inch handsome young man with the most remarkable ears. <laughs> and my plans changed. And after about two months, he just shows up. Just shows up on daddy's doorstep and gives me an ultimatum. I am to marry him at once or it's over. <laughs> if I say no, it'll be a failure of nerve and heart. And then daddy pulls me aside. Honey, some of the best deals are made in haste. <laughs> On the news, they showed these Watergate protesters in front of the White House with signs that said, pick out your curtains, Betty. <laughs> I, I'm so embarrassed about that. I, I saw Pat the next day at lunch, and I start to apologize. She goes, Betty, don't worry about it. I never watch the news. I wonder if Mrs. Carter would go for cocktails instead of tea. <laughs> He told me I had the finest ideals of anyone he had ever known, and that we were destined to achieve great things together. Well, it took about two years, but eventually I came to feel, well, I felt, <laughs> you know what I think? I think the Watergate break-in was a setup. I do. I wouldn't put anything past them. People have been out to get Dick since the beginning, and they will not stop till they take him down. Onward and upward. That was our motto. Onward and upward. <laughs> and I invented this game in the bathroom with uh, Mary Adelaide Jones. You make the shower water as hot as possible, and then you stick your fanny under for as long as possible. And whosoever fanny gets the reddest is the winner. <laughs> Fun, huh? <laughs> My dad taught me, you hold your emotions in. You don't make a public display of yourself. Only two times I've cried in public, and both times I've hated myself for it. Two times. At my mother's funeral. And when Dick conceded to Kennedy, Lyndon has always been my identity. I know that's a controversial notion nowadays, but as I said to my girls, my Linda Bird and Lucy, this need for women to have their own identity belongs to their generation, not mine. I chose this life. I chose to love that scratchy man. <laughs> So I did. I spoke out about my experience and told women everywhere to go get tested. And apparently thousands upon thousands of them did. Little Miss uh, Never Quite Good Enough had an effect on the world. 
I suddenly realized I had this incredible platform and it would be crazy not to use it. So I did. I, I spoke out about elder abuse, disabled children, the arts, the Equal Rights Amendment. I love this job. I love it. I have been able to make a difference. Okay, Mrs. Carter, you're on. <laughs> So I went to the Museum of Television and Radio and started to cram, and I was so moved by the strength of the women, the intelligence, uh, the quirkiness, and after that I realized I really wanted to tell their stories in depth. I wanted a funny play, but I wanted a play that would really make you walk in their shoes. Mm -hmm. 